So it looks like we have a guest joining us today. Thank you for clicking on this video. Today I will be showing you what I did to transform our floors from... He's being needy right now, yes. Okay, okay, you're okay. Sit. Good boy. Good boy, good boy. <laughs> uh, thank you for clicking on this video. Today I will be showing you what I did to transform our floors into this. I'll pop a picture of what it looks like. I found this picture on Pinterest a couple years ago and it's been on my mood board ever since. I really like this pixelated hexagon tile leading into wood or vice versa. I thought that was like super cool and modern and I knew that eventually once we bought a home that I wanted to incorporate that into my design, my home aesthetic. So I'm glad that I have that now here. Like it looks so cool. So I'm going to be showing you my process of like me achieving this. This will not be necessarily a tutorial per se, just because a lot, of the, a lot of the things that I'm doing, I maybe do not do correctly, but they worked out for me and I'm not really stopping to show you exactly like where to cut. So take this as a just informative video of what I did and my experience with trying to tackle this. Before we get into it though, my name is Alexis. Um, I'm an interior design enthusiast. I love anything interior design, decorating, styling, if you follow me over on Instagram, I do post some of that on there, um, along with fashion content, um, dog content. Um, I do love plants as well, as you can see in the background. So I do post content about my plants on there. So if you want to join me on there, go ahead and go follow me. Um, but yeah, let's get into the video. He's literally falling asleep right now. I thought that I could use an angle grinder with a diamond wheel, and I'm sure that um, I could have the tile with the angle grinder, but it just, it wasn't working and I didn't want to push it. You just see that like the angle grinder takes really big chunks out of the tile and that's not the look that I was going for. So a couple weeks later, I ended up actually getting a wet tile saw cutter. Um, there's a lot of Ryobi tools in this video. It is not sponsored by them, but I will not be upset if they want to reach out. This did the trick. I bought a diamond cutting wheel for the wet tile saw cutter and it cut it just fine. It was really scary at first just because I had never used a wet tile saw cutter, but it was a fairly simple process. Um, and it didn't take that long for me to cut all the tiles that I needed. One of the main things that you need to watch out for um, when using this tool is to make sure that you have adequate amount of water that the tool requires. I double checked it because it was running low on water and you just add a little bit of water in there till the fill line and then it starts cutting just fine again. So just make sure you have enough water in there. Otherwise, you'll have trouble cutting. done cutting all the tiles I came back inside I laid them all out I spaced them out with little grout spacers and then I drew a line on the floor of where the tiles were going to end then in this clip you see me adding a quarter of an inch gap all the way around just so that at the end I could caulk all the way around and then have it be a finished product Now, initially, I thought that I was going to be using this tool. It is a oscillating tool or a multi-purpose tool. I bought the exact um, attachment for like wood cutting and I thought that this was going to be the tool that I needed um, to just cut out the floor. As you can see me here, I'm struggling to even cut the floor. I'm going back and forth. There, that's when I'm like, okay, why isn't this working? Um, but it, it did end up cutting the floor, but I ended up using another tool. I ended up using this circular saw, another Ryobi tool. So I just used the gauge tool here. I adjusted the depth, how deep I wanted this uh, tool to cut. Um, I made tiny cuts here and there just to make sure that I wasn't going all the way down to the subfloor. I just wanted to like um, barely graze the subfloor and it worked out pretty good. I thought, like I don't know why, but I was overcomplicating things in my mind. Um, but yeah, a circular saw and a really steady hand and just being really patient did the trick. So as you can see here, it went through fairly easy. I mean, there is a lot of dust that kicks up but it made really clean cuts. Um, 
I didn't go all the way to the edge of the shape, I, I would not be able to get really clean 90 degree angle cuts. So what I ended up doing is getting the oscillating tool and then cutting um, the corners and that seemed to work out fine. Um, Whenever I needed a plank to come up that was still attached to the corners, I just used the oscillating tool to like cut all the way down through and that did the trick. At this point, I was really surprised that like I hadn't really made a huge mistake. As you can see, the subfloor is barely touched at all by the circular saw, so this really worked out. So what I did to cut out the exact shape of the cement board is to just make a pattern. Um, I have a sewing background, so that's <laughs> It made sense to me to do it this way. From what I read, you can't tile over the subfloor just because the temperature difference could eventually crack the tile. So you need to have a barrier between the subfloor and the tile. If I could go back and do something differently here, I would just add a lot more screws. It was just to make sure that there is no shifting within the cement board. Um, there wasn't any, like the finished product is completely fine, but I think just for my perfectionist, um, overthinking um, <laughs> self, I would just go back and add more screws. So this is what it looks like. I added tape all around the edge to try to protect it. I did not want it to get dinged up. I mean, hey, that's gonna be the finished edge, so I did not want to mess that up. Um, but yeah, it turned out pretty well. It took me, I think at this point, it had been maybe like four hours into the project. So once all the tiles were cut and every, the subfloor was ready to go with the cement board, I added all the tiles back to the floor. I wanted to make sure that everything was going to line up, that all the spacing was where it needed to be, and if I needed to make any adjustments, this was the time to do that. And luckily, it all came together. There were um, not, I mean, from what I, I mean, this is my first time doing it, but I didn't really see huge gaps or a big mistake anywhere, so we continued. Um, my mom is helping me at this point. You can kind of see her walking around. Um, and if it wouldn't have been for her, this would have taken way too long. I think at this point it was like 10 p.m. and I really wanted to adhere these tiles to the floor. So she helped me with the tile adhesive. I hand her the tile, she adds the adhesive, I press it down. Glad that day she was there to help me because otherwise the back and forth would have just been really annoying. The other thing that really helped was having the dogs around. They were just really curious as to like what we were doing. So it was nice for them to just come in and out whenever they wanted to interact with us. This is the next day and the towels dried overnight and then I started grabbing them. So I went back and forth as to what color I wanted the grout to be. Um, I thought maybe black at first, um, but I eventually went with this light gray and I think that was the right choice. And it brings out all the little inclusions in the tile, like the little veining and the, uh, the subtle like variations within color. So I think it really worked out. Also, don't judge me. I used pre-mixed grout. I didn't want to have to deal with all that and it was easier for me. So don't, don't come for me. <laughs> taking 
the haze off of the tile after they grow. So what I did was just clean up as I went because I didn't want that buildup to be there. And then when I, I know that they sell a specific um, tile like a haze cleaner, I did not buy that. Just use an all-purpose cleaner, and that took up the haze pretty well. As you can see here, the tiles are pretty shiny, so. I was kind of scared about the haze, but I'm glad that that wasn't a big issue. Okay, this is where we're gonna get into a little bit of a rant. Um, so I bought this sanded ceramic tile caulk. Let's try saying that five times. Tile, sanded ceramic tile caulk. It's supposed to be flexible just like silicone, but it has the look of grout. I left it alone for three days and it still did not dry. So I don't know, maybe I just got a bad batch, but I will say do not trust this product. Sanded ceramic grout, no. Eventually I just had to go back and add just like a black silicone caulk all around the crack and it, it covered it just fine. It, looked, it actually looks a lot better, but I'm just upset that I had to spend all that money for it to not work. Don't come for me, I'm using my fingers to smooth this out. I will say adding that tape barrier from the floor and the tile to caulk, I mean, I know that a lot of professionals, this is the way to do it, but do it. Do not skip that step. It creates really clean lines. Oh, and this is just so satisfying, like seeing the tape go up, so satisfying. Now the last thing I had to do, I, I use this as my threshold, so that's the gap between the door and the floor. Um, I found this little metal piece at Home Depot and I, I saw someone else use this as their threshold. So I went ahead and did that and it worked out. Are you ready to see how it turned out? All right, let's take a look. I also ended up putting towels up at the front door. I followed the same process. So as you can see, it was a very, um, it was a very tedious task to get these floors done, but it was doable. And if you guys have any questions, like DM me on Instagram or even just like add a comment here. I'll, I'll check them periodically and I can try to help give you any pointers and help you out if you're actually going to tackle this task. So yeah, just let me know. And I think on that note, since now I'm covered in dog hair, I think it might be time to go. This is Benny, by the way. Um, he's one of my chihuahuas. I have four chihuahuas in a lap. If you like this video, give it a like. Subscribe if you would like to. And I will be posting more design-oriented videos on this channel. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs>